We are in 1953 in Cambridge, a city where scientists are racking their brains to corner what was known as We have discovered, discovered the, the molecule, molecule of life. life! Yes, that one. Okay, let's rewind a little. Several researchers over many years discovered that in the nucleus of our cells there was a substance called DNA, which contained all our genetic information, and it was made of four compounds. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. How was it possible that the whole book of our life was written with just four letters? Our celebrating friends James Watson and Francis Crick thought that maybe the answer was in the structure of DNA, and they were trying to solve this four-pieced puzzle that was driving all the scientific community crazy. They had two clues. The first one was a discovery made by Erwin Chargaff, who found that, in all organisms he tested, the relative amounts of adenine and thymine were equal, and the same happened with guanine and cytosine. The second clue came from Rosalind Franklin, an experienced chemist who generated DNA crystals and shot X-rays through them to study their structure. The X-ray picture showed a repeated pattern, which meant it was something similar to a helix. Watson and Crick tried all the different possible unions between A and T and G and C, and one was perfect. Two bonds between A and T and three bonds between C and G would fit in a helix. A double helix indeed. Also, the four units structured this way could code a huge amount of data, as a dot and a dash can compose a whole alphabet in Morse code. On top of these discoveries, specific pairings suggested the copying mechanism for DNA, for the production of new cells and new life. Ten years after the celebration in the pub, Watson, Crick and Morris Wilkins, the boss of Franklin, received the Nobel Prize for this discovery, and the DNA revolution spread across every biology laboratory in the world.